these tiny little things can be such a pain. Do they look good here? Better over there? How many? What size? And really, does your card even need them? If you've been struggling with embellishments, stick around because you're gonna walk away from this video knowing exactly when and where to use them. Hey there, it's Carrie at Ink Hill Revival. I'm all about helping you see what you and your stash can do. Let's first take a look at some embellishment arrangements, and these are something you can use on repeat. The most common one I use is a triangular arrangement. Now, don't just put a triangle wherever on your card. Specifically plan for it near your focal point. Instead of an equilateral triangle, all equal sides, do something more interesting. Two longer sides, one short side, so two of your embellishments would be closer together and the third further away. That's going to keep it more interesting than equal spacing. The next arrangement kind of overlaps with the triangle one. It's using groups of three. Three points on a triangle? Yeah, if you want the most interesting arrangement, three is always going to be the magic number. But what I don't recommend is using a bunch of groups of three in a very obvious way. If it's super organized and repetitive like that, it ends up feeling a little predictable. So what I tend to do is just use one group of three within the triangle setup. Like one triangle point is a group of three embellishments, another point has two, and the last just one. Or other times I'll use a single group of three just in a simple straight line. Super easy and with some cards it's all you need. Or you could go crazy and have multiple groups of three mixed all around with other arrangements. This will work best for a busy card. Another arrangement is a cascading line. This one's a great way to add movement to your design. You could use it to lead a viewer's eye from the top corner down to the bottom or from one side of the focal point over to the other. But however you plan it, keep that cascading line looking organic and random. A variety of embellishments can really help you there. I love to use different sizes and sheens to mix it up. If your arrangement's just looking too organized, try this. Sprinkle some embellishments from above, kind of in the general shape and area that you want them. Then go from there, thin some of them out and slightly rearrange what's left. Guaranteed, this is gonna be a perfectly random starting point for you. Now I've got one last arrangement tip you can actually combine with any of these other ones we've already talked about. Put your embellishments somewhere interesting. Okay, let me tell you more. Instead of just using empty, obvious places, plan to put your embellishments overlapping other things on your card. Like stick some right on top of your images or have them hang slightly off the edge of them. You could even tuck them under images or sentiments that you've popped up with foam tape and then you've got just a little bit peeking out. And mix this up, put some under, some over, and some in the obvious empty spots. It's all about variety and the idea of planned randomness. It's going to be great to have these go-to embellishment arrangements. If you have more, let us know about them down in the comments. But the other question still stands. When should you even bother with using embellishments? I've personally found three times embellishments are absolutely worth it and really add to a card. I usually make clean and simple cards and sometimes they're so visually simple, a little extra something is kind of essential. But I'm not going to spread embellishments all over the place just because I've got a super empty card. In fact, simpler designs need less embellishments and more attention to where you're putting them. Your best bet here is to focus them right around the focal point. Now let's go to the opposite extreme for another time I think embellishments are worth it really busy cards. What can happen on these is kind of awkward dead space. Like when stamped images or die cuts mostly fill up a card, you usually get left with some areas that just didn't quite fit another image. Embellishments are the perfect thing to fill those areas in with. But remember what we talked about, keep it interesting and don't just fill in the empty spots. Have some of those embellishments overlapping, tucked behind the other card elements. Bring in triangle arrangements, groups of three. You can do quite a bit of embellishing on a busy card. Another time I think embellishments really add to a card is when you've got just the right kind of image to decorate. Think snowflakes, flowers, geometric patterns. 
they all have perfectly logical spots to embellish the image itself. Now, if that image is your card focal point, go crazy. You can go large, go bright, whatever you want for those embellishments. But if you're embellishing a background or supporting images, keep things a little more subtle. This is gonna keep the embellishments from outshining your focal point. Are you getting excited to design some cards? Well, I've got even more design tips for you right here. I tell you all about sentiment do's and don'ts that you do not wanna miss. I'll see you there.